Hello, welcome back to Big W Barbecue. My name is Nate. Today we're going to be cooking up some homemade beef jerky out on the Weber Smoky Mountain. Thanks so much for hanging out with me here today. If this is one of your first time watching one of my videos, a special welcome to you. Now one of the fun things about beef jerky is, is there's a million different combinations that you can do to go ahead and create your recipe as well as dehydrate the meat. So for the dehydration process today, I'm going to go ahead and use the Weber Smoky Mountain. If you don't have a smoker, the other option would be to have a dehydrator, or if you don't even have either of those, you can go ahead and use your oven. So let's go ahead and talk about the marinade that I put together for this recipe. So since we want to let this meat kind of hang out in the marinade for several hours, I went ahead and put this together yesterday evening. So what I did yesterday is I went to my local grocery store and I picked up a three and three quarter pound bottom roast. There's several different types of meats that you can pick. The key here is you want to look for something that's very lean. Another popular ones are top round flank steak, um, rump roast. Um, there's, like I said, there's many different kinds of cuts of meats out there that are possible. There's a couple reasons on why we're looking for a lean piece of meat. One of them is, is that this, this meat isn't really cooking, right? So we're gonna have a low temperature, around 150 degrees, and so this isn't cooking, so the fat is not gonna break down like it normally would if you were to cook this at higher heats. So the second reason on why we're looking for a lean piece of meat is that the fat doesn't do a real good job over time. It kind of breaks down and starts to spoil pretty quick. So like I said, there's several different types of meat that you can look for, just go for the leanest piece that you can get. While I was there at the store, I went ahead and asked the gentleman behind the meat counter if he'd be willing to cut this meat for me. Now, depending on where you live, how busy the supermarket is, etc., you know, they may or may not be willing to do this. I was lucky and fortunate that he was able to. So he went ahead and cut this about an eighth of an inch, and uh, I recommend anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch. You don't want to be too thin where you don't have a good bite of beef jerky, but at the same time, if you're too thick, it doesn't ever fully dehydrate. If you're not fortunate enough to have someone there at the store cut the meat for you, another option is go ahead and throw this roast in the freezer for a couple hours. If it's not completely solid, you can go ahead, take a sharp knife and get yourself a pretty thin piece of cut. So from there, what I did is I went ahead and I mixed up my marinade. This marinade here consists of one cup Worcestershire sauce, half a cup of soy sauce, one fourth cup of water, two tablespoons brown sugar, one teaspoon kosher salt, one tablespoon garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder, and two tablespoons coarse ground black pepper. One other ingredient that you could add if you're not going to be using a smoker is liquid smoke. I would recommend that if you just have a dehydrator or if you're going to be cooking this in the oven. So from there, I went ahead and kind of prepped this meat a little bit further. It's already been cut thin, but there are some chunks of fat on here that I kind of want to trim up. So I just did my best here with a, with a steak knife here, just kind of trim that up, get rid of that. Then I went ahead and cut this slice of meat in half just to kind of give it the traditional beef jerky look. As you trim this meat, go ahead and keep these trimmings. These are excellent meat here for some fajitas or maybe throw them in an omelet. There are many uses with this meat if you don't want to dispose of it. Once my meat is all trimmed up, I went ahead and add this to a gallon Ziploc bag. Then I went ahead and grabbed our, our marinade, went ahead, gave it one final stir, and then I added it to the bag. Went ahead and removed all, as much air out of the bag as I could, and I just went ahead and just kind of mixed this up the best I could. Once you're all mixed up, go ahead and put this in the refrigerator overnight. So that brings us here to today. This meat was sitting in the marinade for about 12 hours. This is going to be totally up to you on how long you want to keep it in the marinade. You know, this is one of the fun experiments there is, you know, you can keep it in there for a couple hours, 12 hours, or even 24 hours. Um, just kind of see what the different flavors do as they marinate over time. This morning I went ahead and grabbed a cookie sheet and grabbed several paper towels and uh, all we're doing here is we're just trying to get as much liquid off of this meat as we can. Don't get too carried away, don't spend too much time on this. Uh, I'm just trying to get as much of that excess liquid off the top just to kind of speed up the dehydration process. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about the cooking process. So like I mentioned, we're going to be cooking this on my Weber Smoky Mountain. I'm going to have a pit temperature of around 150 to 175 degrees. I'm going to try and keep that down towards the low end, around 150 if possible. Since we're looking for a low heat, we're going to go ahead and only light up a dozen or so charcoal briquettes. Then we're going to go ahead and add a pretty good amount of charcoal here to the bottom of the pit. Uh, you know, we're going to be cooking this for several hours, probably somewhere between five to seven hours. Um, and so we want to make sure that there's plenty of charcoal down here, but we're going to have to monitor the airflow here by keeping the vents pretty well closed. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple chunks of applewood 
you don't want to add too much smoke. Um, you can get carried away with beef jerky there. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple chunks there just to kind of, you know, for maybe the first hour or so, um, just to kind of give it a nice light smoke. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and stop talking. Let's get this meat out to the grill. So one of the things I'm going to be doing different with this smoke is I'm going to leave the water pan in. However, I'm not going to add anything to the inside of it. All I'm using this for is a heat deflector. You can go ahead and add a little bit of water to this, or if you want to add some sand or something like that, uh, just to kind of help balance out the heat. However, the least amount of moisture that we can put in this pit, the better. All right, so now when we're putting the meat on the smoker itself here, the key here is uh, to get as much on there as you can without it overlapping. Um, they can be touching a little bit, um, but uh, you don't want it to be overlapping because uh, you want a nice consistent cook um, as well as uh, th these will shrink up a little bit as they kind of dry out, um, which will also give us a little more room to add additional uh, slices of meat here. So my Weber Smoky Mountain is 18 and a half inches in diameter. And um, so unfortunately I won't be able to get all of this meat on in one load, um, but I will, uh, as things kind of cook and shrink up a little bit, I'll try and rearrange stuff and uh, continue to add meat. So we're not gonna cook these to a particular time or temperature. We're just gonna go ahead and keep an eye on them. Once it looks like this meat has lost most of its moisture, that's when we'll go ahead and pull it off. So about two and a half hours, I went ahead and checked the progress on how this jerk. And I figured at this time here, I'd also go ahead and kind of shuffle things around there and see if I can get some more beef jerky on um, to kind of get that second. So all I did was I went ahead and moved some of the beef jerky from the bottom rack up to the top and added some new beef jerky down to the bottom rack. Now, while I was doing all this shifting, Temptation got the best of me and I had to try it one piece. And it was very good. Um, however, it's actually kind of progressing faster than what I was expecting. Um, so this is probably only gonna need another half hour or so before this first batch gets pulled off. Until then, let's go ahead and put this new beef jerky on quickly and get the lid back on and let this continue to cook. So we're back inside now. It took about three hours to kind of get this where we're at right now. Um, so with beef jerky, there's different uh, ways that you can finish this. Some people like a really, um, I, to me it's tough, but I, I know some people prefer it. Um, that's totally fine. Um, some people like a little bit more of a chew to it. You kind of find your preference on what you like there. Um, and one of the nice things here about kind of splitting up these batches is I get to kind of kind of tweak that, right? So this took three hours. and So we'll see how done this is. Um, if it's too tough, if it's not done enough, you know, so we can kind of tweak that as we go. Uh, so that's one of the nice things about, you know, having multiple batches going. So obviously different pieces of meat there, you know, depending on the size of it, may be done, may not be done. So go ahead and just kind of, you almost got to sample them every once in a while just to kind of get an idea of where things sit. Um, one of the things to keep in mind that is that, you know, as it cools down, it's going to harden up a little bit there. So go ahead and pull that off a little bit earlier than what you would typically want your beef jerky. But with all that being said here, I've got my beef jerky right here in front of me. I'm gonna go ahead and try a little piece. So we've got some pretty good color here. Um, you can tell uh, you know, between these three slices here, like this one looks a little bit uh, further long than the others there. Um, but see, it's still got a little bit of a bend to it. Um, you know, it's starting to, to break as you crease it there. Um, you know, it probably could have been on there for a little bit longer. Um, for these particular bigger pieces. However, my preference for beef jerky is to have a little bit more moisture left. I don't want it to be too dry. So let's go ahead and uh, tear this apart here. Yeah, so it's got a pretty good tear. I'd say we cook, we're cooked all the way through, so that's all good. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, try this piece. Mm, yeah, that's super good. Got a lot of flavor there. Definitely taste the smoke. That, that black pepper there gives a little bit of a kick. In regards to the moisture that's left, I would say that this is just at the right level where I like it. <clears throat> it's not too salty, it's not too peppery. You can taste that Worcestershire sauce and the, and the soy sauce through there. Yeah, it's just a lot of great flavors. Yeah, so I would say that that three hour mark for this thickness of jerky was just perfect. I'll probably be right around that three hour mark as well with the remaining batches. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. I appreciate you coming along with me on this cook. With Labor Day coming up here very shortly, if you're going on any road trips, maybe this will be a great snack for that trip. Feel free to leave some comments below this video of your different recipes of beef jerky that you really enjoy. I hope you have a terrific Labor Day weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.